Yeah, it was like four feet long at that point, so I just licked up what I could and got out of there. Did you get your pants? Well, we still have the lock picking kit, so I, hey, 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 Warmbo, I gotta, I gotta do an episode, so I'll, um, I'll have to call you back. Oh, fun! What's it about? It's, um, it's, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, I- impeachment stuff, nothing you need to impeachment, be- Impeachment, you say? Very scary business. Important to talk about. Hey, Mr. Cody, are you going to mention the whole thing about how, 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 how it is important to have law and order? The faster we're able to move on, to the faster we're able to hear as a nation. And then we don't have to say the bad man's name again and start the path towards unity and friendship and love and caring and friendship and happiness and friendship ever after until you all die, except Wombo doesn't die because Wombo doesn't have blood and Wombo doesn't have a heart and Wombo doesn't have have bones and Warmbo does Yeah, that. yeah, hey, Warmbo, that's what the whole thing is about. Totally. So maybe, maybe just- Maybe Warmbo will come over and help Mr. Cody with his video about healing. You know, that that's very nice of you, Warmbo. But... Okay, good. See you soon. Goodbye. Oh, uh, no. Hi, folks. I think I just made a boner. Um, here's some news. We super have to rush through this impeachment video before Warmbo gets here because- He's, he's just a real happy drag. And we kind of need to talk about how the former president and a bunch of the GOP sort of kind of tried to steal an entire presidential election and kind of sort of encouraged their supporters to overthrow the government so their dopey wannabe dictator could stay in charge. And then when those supporters failed to do that, they all just walked away whistling merrily like they didn't just attempt a violent coup or putsch if you'd prefer. And now that former president is getting impeached again. Aren't you excited for the impeachment again? And like, it's probably definitely not going to work again because the GOP, as in those folks who tried to overturn an election, well, they aren't going to vote to convict because they're still holding office, despite a considerable chunk of them trying to overthrow an election. And somehow we're just all keeping on as if there isn't a political party currently pissing in the face of democracy, and in some cases, reality, and just doing whatever they want and saying whatever lies they want and not being held responsible for it while Democrats are tossing senators and their party over inappropriate photographs and very inappropriate touching and minor sex scandals. And like, it's just, instead of trying to hold the GOP just as accountable, I guess Dems just have to lower their standards, you know? So when they go low, we also go low until we both keep going lower and lower. And then we're all in hell and I can already feel the blood rushing into my hate eye. But anywho, it's really fucking weird, huh? How the GOP are just like, not even pretending they aren't actual villains. And now a puppet is driving over to my apartment in his little puppet car to talk about healing and unity. And will probably suggest we censure Trump like he's Tim Kaine, who, and this is a neat fact, is also a puppet. Because despite everything we've seen, the Democrats who hold the majority power in two of the three branches of government are somehow hesitant to punish the people who tried to do a coup and are only gonna give the whole impeaching a president for starting a coup thing a world so long as it doesn't take too long. Gotta, gotta be short, folks. Got lots to do, places to go, and people to not give stimulus checks to. But you know, we aren't here to taint slap the Dems. At least they're trying, I guess, sort of. Not at all enough. I don't know. Th- this isn't about them, okay? This is about unity. Um, oh, wait, sorry. I mean, assigning and reveling in blame. If blame was piss, hot piss, then we're filling a kiddie pool up and just really soaking it in. That's what the time is for. Now is the time for assigning blame and really rubbing that blame in and then calling for punishment and spite. Don't forget spite and feeling super smug because while yeah, there's some delicious piss blame to slather everywhere, very fine piss on both sides. This video is about all the weird little fascists who should but almost definitely won't be held accountable for their actions. Their quirky little insurrectionist actions. The ones who would constantly downplay the threat of Trump and Trumpism and are even now claiming that now that Trump is out of office, he and his office of the former president are going to calm down. Like he hasn't exposed and spawned so many mini versions of himself. Those people were wrong. 
and are wrong and will continue to be wrong and will never admit to being wrong about how Trump not only didn't calm down, but he actively worked to destroy the country. He was divisive, petty, mean, greedy, criminal, and incompetent. And now everyone knows that. It's undeniable. Bask in this, I guess, in being right. We're Ian Malcolm gloating in the helicopter as it flies away from Jurassic Park. Only instead of dinosaurs on the loose, it's a bunch of racist truthers somehow holding office despite claiming that wildfires are caused by Jewish lasers. We had witnessed 9-11, uh, the terrorist attack um, in New York, and the plane that uh, crashed in Pennsylvania, and the so-called plane that crashed into the Pentagon. It's odd, there's never any evidence shown for a plane in the Pentagon. But anyways, I won't, I'm not gonna dive into the 9-11 conspiracy. Ah, but the far left want free healthcare, so they're the same, equal on both sides, you see. Anyway, we're certainly going to talk about that person later, that lady who wants like Democrat politicians and voters to literally be murdered, I think. My point at the moment though, is that she's a direct result of Donald Trump becoming president. One of the dinosaurs on the loose, still at large. That's pretty important to keep in mind here, that the damage is still being done. And if anyone tries to act like we need to move on now, that he's no longer president and not do anything besides stop and say, hey, wait, a lot of people need to go to jail or like not be in the government anymore. Then that person is either in extreme denial a foolish person, or one of the people that needs to go to jail, or all three combined, also known as Ted Cruz. You know, Joe Biden last week at his inauguration gave this impassioned plea for unity, and congressional Democrats, their first response is, great, let's spend the first month of the Biden administration impeaching Donald Trump. They just hate Trump, and, it, and it's for them, their partisan hatred is a higher priority than actually working for the people of this country than doing something about the global pandemic we face than then then helping the tens of millions of people out of work actually get back to work and helping businesses reopen hey ted guess what don't worry there'll be another big stimulus bill coming up vote for it vote for it ted or i guess add to the pile more evidence that you're a complete fraud anyway you're right it's true we just we just, we just hate this Donald Trump for no reason other than partisan anger. Who can even say why we're mad at him in the first place? You know, it's like, it's like, it's like, geez. You get so wrapped up in something, you forget why you're doing it in the first place. All of this anger and not getting anything done. Such a, a shame we can't, as a nation, do multiple things at once. So we should probably just Move on and focus on the other problems, like this pandemic that went grotesquely out of hand for some reason. Probably not important why. And wow, geez, it's weird. There's a lot of other problems in the country too. I wonder what's happened in the last few years. Point is that we need to push aside our illogical hatred of Donald Trump and work to solve all of these many crises that for some reason exist now. No more partisan squabbling or pettiness. No more wasting time, says Ted Cruz, the senator of a state in a country currently having a Twitter war with Seth Rogen and talking about how environmentalists are like Thanos. I guess Ted's a big Dave Rubin and Tim Pool fan. You, you watch the, the, the Avengers, right? The Avengers mm -hmm. movies, you watch on them. So, you know, Thanos basically was Bernie. Yeah, so, so for instance, like Thanos was, the, was utilitarian and Captain America was deontological. Have you noticed in how many movies, how often rabid environmentalists are the bad guys? Hmm. Whether it's Thanos or, or go to Watchmen. Cool stuff, Senator. Hey, Ted, you know how you reached out to AOC to work on some kind of Wall Street or tech regulation after the whole GameStop thing? And she was like, no, Ted. Remember the whole coup thing, Ted? And now you can be like, see, the, the left is so full of hatred. They won't even come to the table on something they agree with. The GOP is the true party of the working class. But the thing is, Ted, nothing's stopping you from writing up anything. That tweet from AOC doesn't mean you can't. Go ahead, buddy, write it. Stop virtue signaling. I look forward to seeing your Wall Street big tech legislation, former Google lobbyist who's, according to Donald Trump, hideous wife is a managing director at Goldman Sachs. But anyway, now is the time for unity and healing. 
according to the people causing the injury. Just to go back to that Jurassic Park analogy, calls for unity from the GOP are kind of like calls for unity by a velociraptor, as it's eating you. Why are you still talking about these dinosaurs on the loose? They'd screech through bites of your pulpy flesh. Now is the time to think about branching the divide between man and prehistoric monster, or did you not actually care about unity? Screech, screech, I say. Hook claw to you, sir. Also, Alan. Alan. And really, if we want this analogy to keep going, we do. If the velociraptors are complaining about unity, they can actually unify with the humans and the T-Rex to take down the big guy, the Indominus Rex from the best Jurassic Park, the world one. And see, here's the thing about unity or healing. We actually have a pretty clear idea of what that means in terms of the criminal justice system. Like, while the idea of closure for victims is often used as a very bad justification for capital punishment, most papers on the matter agree that there is a healing process that will accelerate when a perpetrator is convicted for their crimes and taken off the streets. It gives the victim the ability to move on knowing that person won't harm anyone else. But it's not just that, because our criminal justice system isn't about helping victims, not really. It's actually more about setting lines that people can't cross in order to have a working society. Also, jailing black teens for small amounts of weed. But that's another video subject. I'm not advocating for our justice system, folks. I'm just saying that this is how, like, accountability works, or at least is supposed to work, in the eyes of our government. A crime gets committed, often creating victims of that crime, and our legal system is there to punish the people who did that crime in order to ensure that more people don't keep doing crimes. And hopefully, by doing that, the victims can see some kind of closure or healing. And while that system might have a lot of flaws, it's the same standard we're, in theory, but super not actually, holding everyone to. Certainly, the party of law and order can agree that this is how it works, right? And on January 6th, 2021, crimes were committed. Crimes that we're currently impeaching the former president for, as well as holding a bunch of people in custody for. But the problem is that not all of the people who did the crime are in jail. And in fact, many of them, let's call them motherfuckers, are currently holding and will likely continue to hold government positions while talking about unity and healing. A thing we can't actually achieve because, well, that thing I just said, where they're not in jail. The last four years have been undeniably divisive, and if there's any hope of fixing that, it begins with making sure the right people actually get punished. Heal by punishing somebody. Unify around taking down the dinosaur together. So before my home is raided by a joyful puppet who I now regret giving my spare key to, let's name some of these motherfuckers. The motherfuckers who need to be punished. Hey, did someone say Ted Cruz just now? Like, like, like just now, a sentence ago? Oh right, it was me when I said, did someone say Ted Cruz? That's who said it. Yeah, we should probably talk about this Ted Cruz fellow. You know, the weird little Twitter creep, patsy to dumb president, jacker of 9-11 pornography and wife elbower. Hated by strangers and personal family alike. Bipartisanly hated by his colleagues. It sure seems like he did a sedition or two. And besides, you know, Trump is probably the best person to start with. Because from the moment Trump lied about election fraud, little Ted was right there to back him up. Well, Sean, what we're saying tonight, what we've been saying the last three days is outrageous. It is partisan, it is political, and it is lawless. And, and, and we're seeing this pattern in Democratic city after Democratic city, but the worst in the country right now is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where they're, they're not allowing the election observers in, despite clear state law that requires election observers being there, despite an order from a state judge saying ele election observers have to be within six feet of the ballot counting, they're just ignoring the law. They're defying the law. And there's a reason they're doing that. There's a reason they're defying the law. The reason you don't want observers there is because you're doing something you don't want to be observed. And, and I am angry, and I think the American people are angry because 
by throwing the observers out, by clouding the vote counting in a shroud of darkness, they are setting the stage to potentially steal an election, not just from the president, but, but from the, the, the over 60 million people across this country who voted for him all across this country. It is lawless and they need to follow the law. Sorry, I don't normally want to inflict so much Ted Cruz on you, but it's important to hear exactly what he said in that Fox interview on November 5th and that it was on November 5th specifically, because that's the same day that Trump's lawyers admitted that they actually had representatives in the room watching the count. Meanwhile, on CNN, the Republican city commissioner was confirming the exact same thing. You are a Republican. You have been there every single day. You actually helped out with how this would all work. Give us the truth, please, Commissioner. Well, my party affiliation doesn't and shouldn't affect what's, what's true and what is not true. Uh, observers from the Democratic Party and Republican Party, from the Biden campaign and the Trump campaign, have been in our counting area observing right up against where the process is taking place from the very beginning on election morning when, the, when we began this. So we have Ted Cruz, a uh, lion Ted, if you will, repeating President Trump's lie, literally the exact same time that Trump's lawyers were admitting he was lying. And like, I don't know, maybe Ted didn't know this at the time and was simply making his impassioned incriminating speech based on a few rumors he heard, because that's definitely how you should govern. Anywho, by November 17th, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court officially threw out this case. And it had been made pretty clear that there was simply no substantial voter fraud nationwide. But that didn't stop Ted from tweeting this random and disjointed quote from the 2005 Commission on Federal Election Reform saying, absentee ballots remain the largest source of potential voter fraud. As if this single sentence from a 100 page report somehow meant something? If you actually went to that section of this report, you'd find that they are talking about future potential of absentee ballots and have no actual evidence of this happening in a widespread capacity, and cite anecdotal stories like a 1998 mayoral election where fake names and dead people were used, something that isn't a problem on a federal level as far as we know. And this is how Ted continued to operate tweeting out disjointed quotes from studies about voter fraud, finding isolated stories like this one about how someone submitted voter registration applications while claiming that is proof voter fraud does exist, see? But like, no one is disputing that, Ted. Voter fraud isn't fucking Bigfoot. The question was whether or not it affected this election, which it didn't. And Ted, a guy who clearly cares so much about election integrity knows this. The point isn't to actually prove voter fraud for the current election, but rather to rile up enough fear of fraud that people feel like they are under attack. It's actually a very familiar technique of the GOP. See Mexicans, comma, rapists. What? Most, of course. Most Mexicans. Some, assumingly, aren't. So by the time this got to the actual electoral college vote count, Ted Cruz had absolutely no evidence of fraud. He wanted to delay the count by 10 days, or at least make some kind of weird last stand. And like a terrifying clown who forgot his party kit, just juggled whatever sad crap he had on him. Recent polling shows that 39% of Americans believe the election that just occurred, quote, was rigged. You may not agree with that assessment, but it is nonetheless a reality for nearly half the country. I would note it is not just Republicans who believe that. 31% of independents agree with that statement. 17% of Democrats believe the election was rigged. Even if you do not share that conviction, it is the responsibility, I believe, of this office to acknowledge that is a profound threat to this country and to the legitimacy of any administrations that will come in the future. He argued 
that since so many Americans falsely believe the election is fake, they should humor them with an investigation. Hey, good idea, Ted. Let's investigate all the things a large percentage of Americans believe. But putting aside the absurdity of this argument or the fact that the only reason Americans would believe the election was a fraud is because people like Ted lied about it. Well, let's look at the study he is citing. Here it is again on his official press release. And here's the actual Reuters Ipsos study, which turns out to be of only 1,346 people. And when Ted said that 17% of Democrats, quote, believe the election was rigged, he's talking about this top section here, in which 17% of Dems either strongly or somewhat agreed to the statement, I am concerned that the election is rigged. Note the word concerned, and how maybe that doesn't mean those respondents believed the election was rigged. Oh, also, the polling company came out and flat out said that Ted Cruz was misusing that question. And if you actually just, you know, look down a little bit, just lazily let your eyes drift downward, you'll find on the same page, the much more direct question what comes close to your view of the 2020 election, where respondents were actually given the chance to specifically say it was rigged, and only 6% of Democrats and 20% of independents did that, of this one poll of 1,356 people. So, yeah, Ted is lying. A lion Ted. And he knows he's lying. The proof that he's lying is literally on the same page as the study he's using to lie. Not to mention that literally every election is seen as a fraud by some percentage of Americans, specifically the losing side. That's actually a normal thing that happens. The not normal thing being when politicians who know that's normal somehow decide to feed that lie. So his claim that there's some unprecedented doubt in the election based on this survey is a lie. And it's literally the only reason he has for holding up the vote count. This lie being made by Ted Cruz for the purpose of delaying the election, or to put it in legal terms, Someone using official authority for the purpose of interfering with or affecting the nomination or the election of any candidate for the office of president. Which, hey, is a crime it turns out. One punishable by up to a year in prison. Oh man, can you picture it? Prison Ted Cruz creeping out all the other inmates, getting picked last for prison polo because it's a rich white guy prison. And that's just election interference, a thing he definitely did. If we want to get him on a betting sedition, it might be a bit harder, despite that being a thing he definitely also did. Along with these fine f**ks, you know the f**ks. See, these are the 147 Republican officials who, after the US Capitol was attacked, reconvened and then continued to vote in favor of objections to Joe Biden becoming the president. Meaning that they were evacuated, had their lives threatened by Stop the Steel rioters breaking in, and then came back to count the votes. And while several other empty objections were being thrown out because the GOP had literally zero factual reasons to halt the process, some people still voiced objections after all of that. And these are the people who voted on the objections based on zero actual reasons after they were attacked by people trying to stop the election. Like, they literally gave no reasons for the objections. They did it just to hold up or interfere with the election. And so, just going by, you know, the law, they should all be charged. Or, I guess, have their political donations cut off for like, a little while, that, that's, that's fine too, that'll teach them. What a great day for democracy when the only justice comes from mega corporations. Hey, maybe if the impeachment thing doesn't work out, Trump can at least be thrown into one of those Pirates of the Caribbean cells. Like, super cool that Lindsey Graham feels kinda bad about the whole violent coup stuff, but perhaps he should be in jail instead.
And I'm not saying that just out of anger or dislike or what have you, but because, according to Georgia's Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, Lindsey Graham asked him if he was able to throw out all mail-in ballots in counties that had signature issues in only a few of their ballots, meaning that Lindsey Graham got in contact with Raffensperger repeated a bunch of election lies, and then asked him to throw out legal ballots, which is, according to several Georgia election law experts, a felony. One punishable by up to five years in prison. And so perhaps we should continue to look into that, and whether or not what Raffensperger is saying is actually true, and whether or not Lindsey Graham should be a prisoner instead of a senator. I could do a whole video on Lindsay, but there are just so many VIP jizz swimmers that need a shout out, like Representative Paul Gosar, seen here not pulling off bangs, who teamed up with Ted Cruz for that whole try to stop a fair election biz. But unlike Ted, our new buddy Paul isn't nearly as able to wash his hands of the whole armed insurrection thing. Um, we did a meetings uh, a couple of years ago where our elected representative from Washington, Paul Gosar, came out and we asked him flat out at that time, uh, do you think we're heading into a civil war? And his response to the group was just flat out, we're in it. We just haven't started shooting at each other yet. That's Jim Arroyo from the Oath Keepers describing an interaction with Paul Gosar where he told them that they were literally in the middle of a civil f***ing war. That video is from November of 2020, just a few months before several Oath Keepers attempted to do a planned coup along with several Proud Boys, a fascist street gang. Like, I know you know that, but it's important to really hammer home how the dog whistling is now just screaming the things. Dog screaming? And going back to that Ian Malcolm Jurassic Park analogy, it's important to recognize this as an objective fact before we show you this picture of Paul Gosar posing with some Proud Boys back in July. Bangs are looking slightly better there, Paul. Nice job. Now, sure, Paul could probably say something about how he doesn't remember his Oath Keeper conversation or didn't know who the Proud Boy was, but to quote Ted Cruz, we're talking about a terrorist attack by multiple extremist groups. They are domestic terrorists, groups that were classified as such long before Paul Gosar was taking pictures with them. And while they failed their zip tie insurrection on the Capitol, the seriousness of what they were attempting can't be understated. They were there to kidnap and kill democratic politicians for the purposes of overthrowing an election. And they were aided by extremist groups like the Oath Keepers and Proud Boys who have been for months screaming about doing exactly this. He needs to know from you that you are with him, that if he does not do it now, while he is commander in chief, we're going to have to do it ourselves later in a much more desperate, much more bloody war. So just like, imagine if after 9-11, News started to emerge of politicians talking directly to Al-Qaeda and taking smiling pictures with them and using them as security during their rallies. Oh wait, that wasn't Paul Gosar, that was Matt Gates, who I'm sure will get his own video about his, you know, whole pathetic thing. But like, just to be clear, none of this is necessarily illegal or directly ties them with sedition, but boy, do these honkies need to be investigated and like immediately resign. That's not a controversial thing to want, but rather just basic logic when a politician appears to have close ties to known terrorist organizations. Also, yes, the irradiated Chris O'Donnell that is Matt Gates is yet another politician that should be at least charged with election interference and probably a bunch of other things. Hey, remember when he did an obstruction of justice? Weird how that didn't cost him his job before the other stuff where he hung out with these absurd terrorist weirdos. Anyway, Warmbo is texting me, asking me what flavor of combos I want, which means he's pretty close to my place. All right, pizzeria, pretzel, obviously, idiot. All right, better speed this up. There's bushels more buttweeds who need to, at the very least, Resign, please. Like Representative Pete Sessions, who right before the insurrection tweeted that he met with Stop the Steal people and told them to keep fighting. Then there's Representative Mo Brooks, who before the terrorism happened, told the crowd of rioters this. Now our ancestors sacrificed their blood, their sweat, their tears, their fortunes, and sometimes their lives to give us, their descendants, an America that is the greatest nation in world history. So I have a question for you. Are you 
willing to do the same? My answer is yes. Louder, are you willing to do what it takes to fight for America? Yes, that's an elected official literally asking a crowd if they'd give up their lives and go to war over the results of the election. And then they did. And people, uh, died. And he's still an elected official who refuses to even apologize as he's being censured, which, fun fact, isn't good enough considering that he literally helped incite a riot, as in urging or instigating other persons to riot, which, also a fun fact, is punishable by up to 10 years in prison if said riot involved bodily harm, which it did. Those Stop the Steal folks, by the way, were founded by Ali Alexander, who, right before the Capitol riots, was seen leading chants of victory or death. I bring him up because Ali recently claimed that the entire Stop the Steal event was organized with help from Mo Brooks as well as Paul Gosar, also Representative Andy Biggs of Arizona, who in 2019 attended a Patriotism Over Socialism event supported by the Patriot Movement, Arizona Patriots, and the American Guard, all of which have been classified as hate groups. Biggs also attended an Oath Keeper event and was in the audience when this was said on stage. John Cain is a traitor to the Constitution. He should be tried for treason before a jury of his peers, which he would deny you. He supports your denial jury trial. He supported the NDAA, saying that he could just have the president slam you into a brig in North Carolina or South Carolina or anywhere else you wanted to, try you by military tribunal and have you executed. He would deny you the right for trial to jury but we will give him a trial for jury, and then after we convict him, he should be hung by the neck until dead. Hey! You recognize him? He's the guy from before, the one calling for the bloody war named Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers, the group doing all the terrorism, also known as a terrorist group that many, many politicians seem to be involved in, and I don't know, maybe that's something we should be looking into more. Maybe, perhaps, I don't know, kinda, sorta, it's up in the air, who knows, but just a suggestion. These politicians I'm talking about need to definitely resign and be investigated for crimes, but they won't, and they won't be. And these are just the ones that have loose association with extremists and QAnon types, as opposed to the elected officials that are flat out part of the wild mob. Just finished with our meetings here at the White House this afternoon. We had a, had a great planning session for our January 6th objection. We aren't going to let this election be stolen by Joe Biden and the Democrats. President Trump won by a landslide. Call your House reps, call your senators from your states, We've got to make sure they're on board and we already have a lot of people engaged. Okay, stay tuned. To put this very lightly, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene is a person in serious need of an intervention. The once owner of a CrossFit gym turned into a sudden politician, she has literally no business being elected to Congress. During her time in the spotlight, she made a campaign video threatening to personally shoot Antifa members, called Obama a secret Muslim, and said the Clintons killed JFK Jr. As I already mentioned, she's a 9-11 truther and a proponent of the Jewish space laser theory. She's helped spread disinformation about the Sandy Hook shooting and once chased David Hogg down the street and harassed him about gun laws. Yeah. David, why are you supporting the red flag laws? If there had been, if Scott Peterson, the resource officer at Parkland had done his job, then Nicholas Cruz wouldn't have killed anybody in your high school or at least protected them. Why are you supporting red flag gun laws that attack our Second Amendment rights? I don't know how to delicately say. She, like, seems pretty f***ed up, man. And needs to be taken out of power, like, f***ing yesterday. People are literally changing offices to be not near her. She has posted pictures of herself holding a gun next to her political opponents. If she was working in any other job, she would be fired. This isn't a person who needs to be called out or debated or lampooned on SNL, Jesus f***ing Christ. No, they just need to be removed from power as quickly as possible. Because they might literally shoot somebody. People like Lauren Bobert, who is apparently having standoffs with house metal detectors. They need to be handcuffed and investigated. Bobert, specifically, needs to be asked why she was seen giving people tours before the Capitol riot when tours had been canceled since March. 
We need to know who she gave tours to. We need to know why she once tweeted, I am the militia, like some kind of lone gunman, or why she brazenly claims the election was stolen, or why she thinks Tom Hanks is a pedophile, because folks, he's America's sweetheart. Bobert's tweet about Tom Hanks referenced his Greek citizenship. That's basically code, because some QAnon followers believe that Hanks's dual citizenship in Greece is an attempt to escape child abuse charges, pedophilia charges. This is all weird cult sh and needs to be looked into. And until we know what exactly is happening with her, she should not be in charge of laws. We need to know why she has so many close ties to right-wing militias and has even used them for security. Or why on the day of the fucking US Capitol riots, she not only tweeted Nancy Pelosi's location, but the words today is 1776. I don't know, maybe I'm some kind of soft nanny state cuck here, but it seems like any politician who hangs out with militias and calls for the death of other politicians should at least be investigated. Hey, I'm looking at you, Marjorie, you terrifying, uncompromising mess. Protest. Protest against this out of control, tyrannical, insane federal government of ours. They're insane. And let me tell you something about the resistance and the government. You know what? They are nothing compared to the American people because there's only a handful of them when you hold them up against how many Americans there are. They are nothing and they should fear us. Every single one of them that is obstructing, obstructing justice, that is obstructing Trump policies, that is obstructing the will of the American people, they should, they should fear us. They should be cowering in fear. And you know what? If you show up in big numbers on February 23rd, oh, I promise you, I promise you they'll be struck with fear on the inside. All the Obama holdovers and the Hillary Clinton holdovers and the resistance that stands in the way and all these different agencies and the courts and all these different, different offices they stand in the way, they push papers aside, they stop policies from happening, they don't tell the truth, they won't pass on information. All of those obstructionists and resistance, they are nothing compared to the American people. Do you understand that? See, all of us together, when we rise up, we can end all of this. We can end it. We can do it peacefully. We can. I hope it doesn't have to, we don't have to do it the other way. I hope not, but we should feel like we will if we have to. Don't be confused. She's not sparking some kind of V for Vendetta revolution there, but rather telling her followers that they should wage possible violence to specifically uphold Trump, the guy who lost like a loser, and Republican values, her values. America is the light of the world. Do you understand that? Our freedom and what we represent, we're the light to the world. If this generation, if all of us allows our freedoms to fall, if we allow ourselves to be pushed into socialist programs like the stupid $15 a, an hour living wage, if we allow ourselves to go into complete socialism, if we allow ourselves into gun control, do you understand that we are just allowing that light to be dampened and to be covered and we're allowing that light to go out? Viva la resistance! Let us all rise up and demand that the government pay us less than a living wage. This isn't the people rising up against the big greedy government, but rather members of the big greedy government trying to get the people to do their big greedy agenda. These are the politicians, all of which somehow still in power, who should instead be jailed for either inciting a riot, sedition, or at the very least, election interference. But you know, probably won't. And we're just talking about this one Capitol riot thing, as opposed to all the bad things Trump did in general, and all the architects of those things, like his kids, and Stephen Miller, and all the other ghastly hate wads who will likely never see a day in court. I'm just talking about the capital insurrection and election interference and all the enablers and sycophants who specifically aided Trump in this one specific crime. The crime being an attempted coup. Ooh, 
Ooh, like Josh Hawley. Man, we haven't even talked about Fist Guy. Oh, Fisto Jayhawk was actually the first, first jackass to object to Biden being elected. He then blamed mega corporations for interfering with the election, falsely claimed that Pennsylvania didn't follow election laws, and sent out a fundraising email showcasing his objection as the U.S. Capitol was being stormed by rioters. Funny story, actually. After January 6th, Hawley suddenly started denying that he was trying to overturn the election results and dodged any questions about the subject. Hey, that's weird. Dude seems to have a memory problem. Maybe he should go to jail about it. Sorry, Josh, I don't mean to muzzle America with this whole maybe powerful people who do crime should go to jail for f***ing once thing. You must just like freedom of protest a lot. Like how you told everyone that Antifa scumbags had vandalized your house and then police later said that wasn't at all true and they just drew with chalk on the sidewalk. Like children do. For fun. Sorry you're feeling censored. Maybe you should whine more and then go to jail about it. There's, there's gotta be more. Let me, um, poorly transition to an ad. Oh, hi! Happy all of it, forever, all of you, everybody's! Wombo teamed up with Skillshare, so the first 1,000 subscribers who click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Just click the link in the description or go to http colon slash slash skl dot sh slash some more news 2021. Cause Wombo says, cause, you know, see, um, hello, cause, Hi! Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Like Wombo! Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. But always get found! You don't want to be lonely or scared for too long! You can do illustration, or creative writing, or music production, or graphic design. Other stuff, too! It's for learning, so there are no ads. Like this really good one! And they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay, um, you can, hi, you can, you can stay, um, ha 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 ha! You can stay focused and follow where your creativity takes you at less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Whatever money is! Wombo got Skillshare as a gift for Mr. Cody, and Wombo didn't use it, but Mr. Cody did, and he took a class called Simple Character Animation, Create a Walk Cycle with Duick for Fraser Davidson, and Wombo used his powers of persuasion to make him make this! Yay! It was quick and easy for him, I hope! Yay! The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Or go to http colon slash slash skl dot sh slash someone news 2021. Thanks, whatever. Anyway, then you got the local officials, the Wayne County canvassers Monica Palmer and William Hartman, who tried to reverse their election certification after getting a phone call from Trump, a, um, attempted felony. The many lawyers who sacrificed all of the credibility to push nothing cases on Trump's behalf and should never be able to get a client ever again. Or like that one lawyer who, and this is true, was caught voting illegally. You know, the thing they have been saying the Democrats did. Some of these people will no doubt see some kind of consequence, but like, there are just so many. Like, have you even heard of Chris Kobach? He's the former Secretary of State of Kansas, who once pushed for a bad voter citizenship law and did such a terrible job in court that the judge held him in contempt and then actually ordered him, by law, to get a better education. He was then fined for presenting misleading arguments during the case, and I bring him up because he is now the guy representing Monica Palmer, one of the Wayne County officials who tried to reverse the election results. Chris Kobach, just this one shitty dude you probably never heard of, apparently devoting his life to half-assed legal attempts to screw over voters. And I don't know, maybe he shouldn't be doing that anymore. My God, I haven't even talked about Rudy. And like... 
Do I even need to? Let's have trial by combat. Do we even bother jailing Rudy or just continue to let him slowly erode into a demonic elixir of blackened cum goo and ashen teeth? Just a puddle of congealed toxins with a daily guest slot on Fox and Friends. <laughs> Jizz, I mean jeez! We haven't even talked about the mountains of misinformation and propagandists that were able to lull America into ignoring major extremist groups in the country, and how a lot of these grifter sites like OANN and the Daily Caller and Fox News are literally designed to queef past FCC rules and propaganda laws. And maybe we should fix those laws? But even with the laws we have now, there should definitely be investigations into people like Andy No for spending his entire career doing PR for the Proud Boys, a group Canada just labeled terrorists. If you know Andy, then you know that he's been using selective editing and photography to spin Antifa clashes with white supremacists as acts of unprompted leftist violence. Like the time he posted a video of Antifa attacking, quote, people on a bus with a hammer, without mentioning that the innocent bus victims were actually a white supremacist group who, as seen in previous photos, actually had the hammer to begin with. And when I showed him another angle and asked him where the hammer came from, he blocked me. Hi, Andy. How's that British accent that's fake going for you? Anyway, one time someone threw a milkshake at him and he claimed it gave him a brain hemorrhage and then refused to show his medical records and then set up a GoFundMe and made almost $200,000. Because he's a hack grifter, you see. Oh, also, he once helped make a list of journalists with, quote, Antifa ideologies. It was actually just journalists who followed Antifa accounts. And then that list was used by white supremacists and accelerationist terrorists as a list of people to try to hurt and kill. Oh, also, there's footage of him hanging out with right-wing militias as they planned an assault. So, yeah. Gotcha, okay. Huh. Yes. What's that? We were just checking which way the wind was blowing so we don't spray ourselves. Uh, yeah, that would suck. There's a hundred of them there? I'll take the first three. <laughs> Let's go get a beer and say fuck it. Uh, huh? Okay. I know a lot about fighting. How many are there? If we yes. waltz up in yes. there, they're all sitting there drinking and waiting. How many are there? Like they know we're coming because you, you put it on the Oh, they, they said, okay. So we, we strolled by there. Are they coming no, out? No, sure. no. But they saw me and they know I'm telling. So. Let's just walk by well, there. No, the thing is, no, the thing is no, he's no, saying no, there's like a no, 50 no, or 100 guys out in the parking lot. No, no, I, I don't think we're going to be able to get inside. There's a bunch of people with no jobs. We don't care about going there. I'm definitely not. You see him in there? Just smiling and waiting to film? but not actually filming as members of Patriot Prayer stood around and planned a May Day attack on a local restaurant that they suspected contained Antifa members dining. You can hear them literally talking about spraying people with gas. The resulting attack would leave one woman unconscious. This was led by Patriot Prayer big shot Joey Gibson, who would go on to storm the Oregon Capitol in January with other members, one of which now charged with assaulting police officers because they are a terrorist group. People literally planning violence violent attacks on businesses and government buildings, and just people dining, while Andy No quietly followed along like their personal PR photographer. And while there's like countless articles breaking down the many lies he's made, or the many false claims he's retweeted, for some reason, this mother just published a book of more lies and typos and testified before Congress. Thank you, Chairman Cruz, Ranking Member Hirono, and members of the committee. Antifa is not a myth. While wearing his best fake British accent too. It's fake. The accent is fake. He's a fraud. It's a fake accent. This pathological liar and weirdo was invited by Ted Cruz, another weirdo and liar, to talk about the Antifa menace back in August, roughly six months before the US Capitol was violently attacked by a... Uh, not Antifa. In fact, they were so not Antifa that they were actually the people Antifa opposes, also known as the, um, Fa. Jeez, it's, it's almost like this whole time there was an uptick in white supremacist extremist violence and instead of addressing it, politicians focused on the counter protesters to those groups and a lot of people like Andy No spent their careers aiding those extremists by unfairly labeling Antifa as the real problem and maybe 
We now need to recognize that and never, ever, 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 ever listen to the grifters who tried to tell us that right-wing violence wasn't an issue and investigate whether or not they knew at the time they were lying about the threat of Antifa being somehow worse than all the Nazi militias brewing in this country and dig into their associations with these terrorists. We should look at folks like Tim Pool who kept downplaying and supporting the Proud Boys and think, hey, 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 maybe Tim should get in trouble for aiding a terrorist group. Like, not arrested or anything, but he should experience consequences, right? Like folks like him and Ben Shapiro and Scott Adams and Annie No and Charlie Kirk and all those other shifty creeps who spent years saying that Trump wasn't the threat and it was actually Antifa and socialist. Well, they were proven wrong and shouldn't have careers where they are listened to. They shouldn't testify to Congress or go on the news or have books. They are hacks who at the very worst help destabilize the United States by pushing right-wing propaganda or heck, sending 80 plus buses to that thing where people tried to kill members of Congress. These people need to f***ing just go. They need to professionally vanish forever or more realistically until the New York Times puts out a piece about how sorry they are. Oh right, yeah. The New York Times as well while we're on a tear. And anyone who put out think pieces about how Donald Trump won't be so bad, and really anyone who put out some monster brain take about Trump finally becoming president or learning his lesson or doing anything but slowly and deliberately eroding the country. I'm sort of getting into the not illegal stuff, but Warmbo is taking a lot longer than I expected. It's um it's it's it's, it's just frustrating because they've arrested 135 people so far in connection to these Capitol riots. And not one of them are the people who actually caused this to happen. Like, don't get me wrong, there are people behind bars that, you know, probably should be for a while. Preferably in a type of jail focused on prisoner reform that frankly doesn't actually exist in the US. But again, that's another video. But if we simply stop there and dust our hands off and pretend like we fixed the problem, well, this is just going to keep happening. Going back to the basic logic behind criminal justice, actually deterring this crime means punishing the people at the top. And right now, we're McNulty nabbing kids at the towers while Avon Barksdale goes free. But instead of selling that sweet, sweet heroin, the crime here is an attempted coup. It's trying to steal an entire election. And unless they're caught, these people aren't going to stop here. We know this because while all the news of the Capitol riots were filling our eyes and ears and maybe a few other holes. There was an entirely different coup attempt going on in the Pennsylvania State Senate. A motion has been made to invoke section 576 of Mason's manual, a legislative procedure to replace the Lieutenant Governor President, who has refused to perform Mr. the duty. President, I am in totally accordance with the Senate this. powers under it is Article not in control of the Pennsylvania Senate. Constitution. It is not being acquiesced. Question, we are shall not changing the process. Section the chair the rules as we move along. Replace the Lieutenant that is Governor with the interim president pro tem. You are breaking the Constitution and the, the laws Senate. of the Commonwealth and the violating the oath of you've actually taken. There is nothing about this day that is appropriate. Nothing. And we will not lay down and roll over because you got more, four, more, more, four, four more folks on that side of the aisle. This is about Pennsylvanians, not Democrats or Republicans. This is not about simply winning. It's about protecting our democracy. Neat how those guys make our laws. What you're seeing there is the aftermath when Democratic Senator Jim Brewster won his reelection by an extremely small number of votes. And instead of accepting that they lost, albeit in a close race, Pennsylvania Republicans flat out refused to swear in the fairly elected official because they didn't like that they lost. When other people objected, the Republican majority simply voted to remove those people from the proceedings. This fascist bullshit went on until a federal judge stepped in and ruled in favor of Brewster. And this is just going to be how elections work now. Along with gerrymandering and voter suppression, claims of fraud and mail sabotage, the GOP are just gonna start saying, no. Like literally just refusing in the face of overwhelming facts that they lost a fair election and will drag out every election in court and falsely claim they were rigged and invoke violence and conspiracy. They'll do it because they saw Trump and his friends do it and not get in trouble. Because America is apparently too exhausted or legally broken to actually convict for brazen acts of sedition. That is, unless we actually convict these people for brazen acts of sedition and maybe, I don't know, reform elections, maybe create an independent body for overseeing voting, closing loopholes, enabling these weird legal battles, and perhaps getting rid of the electoral college, just a thought. But mostly, 
We need to push for as long as it takes to, I don't know, bother them online, I guess. Hey there, silly goat! Jesus, hole! Hey there, Warmbo! I didn't hear you come in. You sure took a while to get here in that stupid puppet car of yours. It's called a Nissan Cube! Sure it is. Hey, listen, it appears you missed the video, so, you know, maybe you can just leave the combos and get out. Did you remember to talk about how, 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 how healing is important and forgiveness and moving on together into the future until you all but not Warmbo die? Yeah, yeah, totally said all of that. Oh, really? That's weird. Because I was under the desk the whole time and heard everything, Mr. Cody! Okay, 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 fine. Maybe I leaned a little more towards Scorched Earth than, like, how the country can heal. Don't worry, Mr. Cody. That's why I'm here! Great! Super! Hey, hey, Mr. Cody! Did you see the inauguration? Yeah! Yeah, I did. I I'm, I'm sure that was really special for you. And, and did you see when... When, when George Bush and Michelle Obama hung out together? Yeah. Saw that, Warmbo. They're such besties, Mr. Cody. Like us. Remember when he gave her candy? Yeah. And you know, I was thinking, maybe, maybe Mr. Cody doesn't have to worry about finding closure after all. Maybe, after a little bit of time, we'll all just learn to get along again. And if Michelle Obama and Ellen DeGeneres can hang out with George Bush, who did no no war things... War crimes, Warmbo. They're, they're called war crimes. Then maybe, in a few years... Don't say it, please. Well, 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 then maybe the same thing will happen to Donald Trump and Ted Cruz and all those other people who did election no-no things. And that means that Mr. Cody doesn't have to worry about holding people accountable or holding grudges at all. Isn't that great news? You are... Depressingly accurate, Warmbo. You mean Warmbo is right? Yeah, Warmbo is technically right, in that what you describe is probably what will happen. Thanks for pointing it out. Hey, can I use a shower? Yeah, sure, I guess. I don't care. Fing puppet! Look, folks, this has been a tough one, but it's important that we do face the dark reality that is Warmbo, and the fact that, at the end of the day, there's a grim chance that none of these people see the repercussions that they so badly deserve, that our grudges will go unanswered. We won't stop advocating for justice, but there's going to be a point where the majority of America will want to move past the whole, uh, coup thing, and take the path of least resistance. And... Who could blame them, you know? This shit is... It's tiring. And there are lots of other problems we could be addressing. The country has just brushed against a violent coup in civil war. We didn't break the seal, but like... You know, just, just the tip in there. And heck, the year is just beginning. And much like that other civil war, a great deal of people went all in on the wrong side of history. And it's going to be impossible to forget that. And since not everyone who got involved actually broke any laws, there's no clear road to how they need to be handled, nor can they simply slip away and pretend they were never involved. And when you look at previous instances of this, such as every sneering white asshole during the civil rights movement, you'll find that these people were either able to remain anonymous or had their racism define them for the rest of their lives. By no means did they deserve sympathy, and obviously the people they victimized had a much harder time. But what I'm saying is that these are like big scary wounds being made. QAnon has affected families and relationships and jobs. And while no one is obligated to forgive or pretend like Q followers are all innocent dupes, there will be some that choose to do that who will opt to forgive and forget that half the country supported a fascist who tried to overthrow an election. Others like, I don't know, Myself will probably go the other way with it. I don't know, just thinking about it. It'll be messy. There will be a lot of fighting, but perhaps, just a suggestion, it would be easier to handle the aftermath if we punished the ever loving shit out of the politicians and propagandists that got us here and actually made sure that Donald Trump saw consequences for his many, many crimes and was made to never hold office ever again, which the Senate can do if they want, which a lot of them don't. And we will not go quietly into the night. 
It would sure be nice for the victims to know their attackers and those who aided their attackers are safely outside of society. And yes, we're victims of this. Don't let anyone tell you we aren't. A crime was committed on us. And we deserve to see the criminal get punished. But going back to that whole death penalty and closure thing, it's worth noting that many family members of victims who saw their murderer get the death penalty reported feeling empty afterward. Some even feeling as if they wasted large chunks of their life on getting revenge rather than mourning their loss. And I know this isn't exactly the same thing, and I feel obligated to say that I'm not advocating for the execution of anyone. And in fact, we should abolish prisons and money and I don't know, presidents too, probably. My point is, is that everyone has their own limit for when they simply have to move on. And we need to respect that, I guess? And ultimately, the goal is to heal and be happy and have lots of weird sex. And if we had to choose between actually making the world better and punishing the people who tried to make it worse, well, I'd like to hope we'd all do the rainbow and hand-holding junk. Like if you told me I could either kick Matt Gates in the taint or make sure anyone who gets kicked in the taint can see a doctor free at point of service regardless of their income or employment, well, I'd like to have the presence of mind to choose the one that makes an actual positive change. But also, no one is asking me to make that choice. And we live in a world where both justice and progress can exist, where you can have your taint and kick it too. So, you know, f them. Speaking of taint, I clogged your sink, Mr. Cody! Yeah, you did, you hairy little mutant. Yeah, you did. <laughs>